This week on The Splash, we take a look at our local park's winterization methods. Then we see how a local church is creating a healthier community. And later, we visit the annual Daddy-Daughter Dance. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories, all so that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash. I'm your host, Sheena Monin, and as always, thank you for joining us. West Bloomfield Parks works hard to keep our local parks looking clean and pristine, even in the wintertime. So much so that they recently won an award for it. Reporter Jason Polly has the story. West Bloomfield Parks continues their pursuit to find innovative ways to improve our local parks, even winning a couple of awards along the way. Our staff is very unique in that they're always looking for opportunities to make the parks better. They're always looking for innovative ideas, always new and fresher ideas that hopefully we can then implement to make the park system much better. The Parks Department is constantly coming up with new ideas, looking for new time and money saving techniques. You know, we're trying to do, we do all this stuff in-house with our own staff. They come up with the ideas. We try to do as much fabricating of this equipment in-house to save the taxpayers money. In years past, the Parks Department has been faced with several challenges. So we'd have broken pipes in the wintertime that we'd still get freezing. And then our parts, when we were putting them back together, um, it takes time, a lot of time and energy to take those faucets and toilets apart and put them back together in the spring. And then we'd always have issues with those parts getting dried out in the wintertime, the seals. But the team was up to the task. Recently, the Parks Department received an award from M Parks, Michigan's Recreation and Parks Association, for their innovative solutions to winterizing water pumps. Since we've gone to the system, we've had absolutely no broken pipes, and we also have reduced the amount of uh, gaskets that we have to replace in our toilets and our sinks. But winterizing the pipes isn't the only innovation the parks have been celebrated for. We, we actually take rock salt and turn it into brine, so we're using less rock salt, which is helping save the environment. We're also mixing in beet juice, which is obviously not salt, which is also better for the environment. And between the two systems, between the brine and the beet juice, we're reducing the amount of salt. In that whole process, if we can create some environmental advantages where we're not affecting our environment, after all, we are parks, we should be the green leaders. The main goal is to come up with better ways to do our jobs, do them smarter, and have an environmental impact that is positive to the community. And we're able to use those in, a, in an efficient and effective manner and keep the parks um, up to date, clean, safe, and friendly. Um, they get a huge benefit in the fact they're able to use the parks. They can bring their kids out here, they can bring their families out here and enjoy these wonderful uh, facilities. With all this innovation, it's no wonder why West Bloomfield Parks continues to thrive and play a key role in our community. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Jason Polly. To find out more about our local parks, be sure to visit civiccentertv.com slash parks award. One local church is partnering with experts in the community to show us the basics of living a healthy life. Reporter Ryan Younglove has the details. I'm here at Spirit of Grace Church, where Michigan State Extension is here to put on a class about nutrition and how to live a healthy life. Uh, we have a series of lessons or sessions that we do with senior citizens. Uh, we have a curriculum that we work with. It's called Eat Smart, Live Strong. And it's to encourage them to eat more fruits and vegetables throughout the day and throughout the week and to do more physical activities and also drink lots of water. The most important thing is we usually live longer because we're busy. It keeps our blood flowing through our body. It helps us from, uh, to fight off diseases that we may have. And uh, many times when we get older, we just decide that we're not going to do anything. But it's, it's good. to and, and then interacting with other people when you're in a session, we have a series. So we do six times, sometimes eight times with the seniors, and they get a chance to see people maybe they haven't seen for a while. So that helps a lot, too. It, it lifts the spirit. I hope that I have um, encouraged them and supported them enough to know that you can do, you can do whatever you want to and, and be healthy, but you have to make sure that you're eating right. 
and and being careful to do some of the physical activities so your your blood can flow wonderful through your body. The turnout of the class was great, giving everybody new knowledge about nutrition and healthy living. From Spirit of Grace Church here in the Greater West Bloomfield, this is Ryan Younglove reporting for the Splash. For more information on the event, visit civiccentertv.com slash nutrition class. Coming up, we join the fun of the daddy-daughter dance, and later we enjoy another episode of Sidewalk Talk. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. to the splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to the splash. I'm your host, Sheena Monin. The daddy-daughter dance is a much anticipated event for hundreds of fathers and daughters. I stopped by to catch some of those special memories being made. The annual daddy-daughter dance is a popular tradition in West Bloomfield Township with two days being offered and both consistently selling out. This is absolutely one of our favorite events. We look forward to it every year. Uh, it's sold out every year that I can remember. Uh, it's definitely part of family tradition. You know, I think people look forward to it every year. It's really a special date night for dads and daughters. Sometimes, you know, it feels special like a little girl looking up to her dad. She feels like, you know, she's a princess and he's her prince. I have three little girls myself and I know how they feel about their dad and they are super excited. The dance had many fun things in store for both dads and their daughters, providing the perfect way to spend quality time together. We had such a good time last year. She's been looking forward to it for months. We're a family of four, and it's always great to do stuff together, but she really likes doing stuff just the two of us, right? Yeah. Our favorite parts were we got some really cool balloon animals. What did you like? Puppy. We got a little puppy, uh, got some stuffed animals, and there's just a lot of great music for the kids. It's important that, you know, growing up, that kids form really positive memories of, like, growing up, and any one-on-one -on -one time, especially as our family grows, is super important. Finding the time to disconnect from our busy lives and reconnect with family is something the West Bloomfield Parks works hard to provide. Yeah, I think it's great to have that one-on-one -on -one time, maybe away from the rest of the family, um, just to create those special memories. Uh, it definitely changes the dynamic when you just have one-on-one -on -one time. Um, so I think it's so important. We also have events for moms, too, so we don't just, uh, you know, give fun times to the dads. So we have uh, mother-son bowling. We have um, mother-daughter tea in the spring. So we try to facilitate these events, these one-on-one -on -one events, to create memories for families. There's so many distractions in today's society, whether it's technology or a million things going on with school, homework, uh, so it's really great to set aside a few hours for an event like this just to really focus on family and building those memories. So it's definitely something that we as a department try to create opportunities like that for families. We will look forward to seeing what else is in store next year as this popular tradition continues. To find out more about this annual event, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash daddy daughter dance 2018. In this episode of Sidewalk Talk, Samana Sheik asks local residents their thoughts about a special topic. Being stuck in an elevator is bad enough, but it could be worse. Would you rather be stuck in an elevator with an ex you had a bad breakup with or a boss that fired you? A boss that fired me. That would be fun. <laughs> We're going to have a great conversation. 
Many people are like, we'll lash it out in the elevator. That's right, that's right. It would be an interesting time. Probably the X, just because you guys can sit there and argue, but you really wouldn't want to argue with, you know, your ex-boss. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, probably with the boss, because I think if I was fired, I'd like to know why. A uh, ex I broke up with. Compa not a boss, because, ooh, I wouldn't like that. The old boss. Yeah, because I only had one job besides this, and I was, like, close with that one, and I wouldn't want to be in the editor with my ex. <laughs> I mean, an ex-girlfriend and an ex-boss, two different things. I don't have to talk to the ex-boss. I feel like the ex-girlfriend would want to start talking and make it even more uncomfortable, so I'll go with the ex-boss. Probably an ex. I've never had bad terms with an ex, so it'd just be good to catch up, see how they're doing. I just care about them, so. That's very sweet. Yep. Suppose you were stuck in an elevator. Would you rather be stuck with an ex that you had a bad breakup with or a former boss who had fired you? Former boss, because I might kill my ex. So, former boss. Safer bet. I can avoid talking to him and we can work things out, but I can't be in an elevator with an ex. That probably wouldn't be good. Probably a boss that fired me, because I wouldn't really care what I said to him. Yeah, it uh, doesn't matter anymore. An uh, ex. Why is that? I feel like it was probably more good times than bad times. Can I not be in an elevator? <laughs> Elevators are scary. Um, no, definitely the boss. A boss. Because I can talk to them and explain to them our situation. With an ex, I'd probably punch them. Probably a boss who fired me. <laughs> I'm not sure if I could be with any of my exes in an elevator. It's a, it's a very small area, and there's not enough area to run. <laughs> Thank you for your input, West Bloomfield. Join us again next week for another episode of Sidewalk Talk. If you'd like to see some of our other fun and interesting questions on the show, you can do so anytime and anywhere by visiting our website at civiccentertv.com slash sidewalk talk. And now it's time for our Civic Center event update where we provide you with all the latest that's happening around Greater West Bloomfield. And if you'd like to stay up to date on all of the following current events yourself, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash events. Let's get started. Solicitors will be canvassing in West Bloomfield over the next few months. Renewal by Anderson is canvassing now through April 10th on Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Additionally, Comcast will be canvassing Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. now through May 5th. Please be advised that these solicitors are approved to be canvassing in the area. For more information, please contact the West Bloomfield Clerk's Office at 248-451-4848. On February 28th, celebrate some local heroes at the West Bloomfield Public Library with Tuskegee Airmen Flying for Freedom. The Macon Thomas West Bloomfield chapter of the Tuskegee Airmen's president, Major Bill Burnett, will discuss personal stories and fading memories of some of the remaining Tuskegee Airmen, African-American pilots, mechanics, and servicemen who valiantly served our country in World War II. Clips from the film Flying for Freedom, Untold Stories of the Tuskegee Airmen will be shown. The event is free to attend. For more information, call Gina Gregory at 248-757-2451. On February 28th at the West Bloomfield High School Eye Center, join the community for an informative look at the topic of anxiety. The documentary Angst will be shown as viewers learn what causes anxiety, how it affects our daily lives in a few surprising ways, and what can be done to monitor and start to control it. A panel discussion led by Dr. Kelly Rogalski, Jill Gowanko, and Kelly Listas will follow the screening of the documentary. If you or anyone you know appears to be battling this very real difficulty, then do stop by. The event is free to attend. For more information, visit gwbcoalition.org. If you have ever been curious about the printmaking process and have a desire to create your own usable art, then consider signing up for one of the Community Days workshops at the Farber Center presented by the Friendship Circle. This printmaking session goes for four weeks on Fridays, starting on March 2nd and ending on March 23rd. Classes from 9 a.m. until noon and cost $125 for the four-week session. Beginners and those with experience are welcome to join in the fun 
and rewarding process of printmaking. For more information or to secure your spot, visit friendshipcircle.org slash community. The Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society is looking for volunteers. On March 3rd at 10 a.m. at the Orchard Lake Museum, they are holding a volunteer opportunities meeting. No prior experience in a historical society is necessary. Also, both short and long-term opportunities to volunteer are available. Hours are flexible and responsibilities range from simple to complex, depending on your schedule and your desire. To find out more, visit gwbhs.org slash events. Henry Ford Maple Grove Center is offering a series called, Are You Concerned About Another's Drug Use? This workshop is held monthly on Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. and focuses on intervention, resources, impact on both family and friends, as well as what addiction actually is, as well as a myriad of treatment options and plans to help those who need assistance. These sessions are specifically designed for adults only, and registration is needed to attend. You can register by calling Lisa Kaplan at 248-788-3005. If you would like to meet a New York Times best-selling author, you just may be able to do so at the West Bloomfield Public Library on March 6th from 2 p.m. until 3 p.m. Best-selling author Paula McLean is coming to the library to discuss her latest book, The Paris Wife, a story of the first of Ernest Hemingway's wives. This event is expected to fill quickly. For library card holders to enter the drawing for tickets to the event, call the Adult Information Desk at 2 248-232-2290 to put your name on the list for two free tickets. A book signing will take place after the book discussion with the author. On March 7th at 7.30 p.m. at Holy Spirit Lutheran Church off of Orchard Lake Road, a special memorial concert is taking place to honor Mary Freed. The Rondo String Quartet is performing at this event and music will be selected based on some of Mary Freed's favorites, culminating in her own violin being used in some of the songs. This special event is free to attend and future concerts are planned to keep her memory alive. A reception will follow the concert. For more information, visit spiritdrivenchurch.com. That concludes this week's events. However, if you're looking to find even more events going on in your neighborhood, then be sure to follow us at civiccentertv.com slash events and look up our events calendar. Or watch us here for more information on everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. As we head into the break, stay tuned because afterwards I'll be talking with Dennis Kearns of the Jacket Club of Kego Harbor. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Civic Center TV is your home for everything greater West Bloomfield. Here you can tune into community programming such as our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, as well as coverage of local events and meetings in Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. You can also watch all of your local programming online anytime at civiccentertv.com. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Civic Center TV has gone social. Now it's easier than ever to watch, save, like, and share our videos online. See what's happening in your neighborhood, on the streets, and on the web at civiccentertv.com. Be a part of the conversation and get involved. We would love to hear from you. For links to our social media pages, visit us at our website or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to the splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Sheena Monin. In the studio with me this week is Dennis Kearns of the Jacket Club of Kego Harbor. Dennis, thank you for coming by the studio today to tell us about this amazing organization. And uh, before we go ahead and jump right into what it's doing now, can you tell me a little bit about what it is and how it got started? Sure. Actually, the Jacket Club started back in 1966, I think was the year. And uh, the, a lot of people were inside a restaurant having dinner. And uh, they heard the screech of brakes and a crash outside. Came outside and found a a uh, car had hit a, a young boy and uh, hurt him pretty bad. And uh, they came out to help. The mom showed up with a couple of kids in tow. And uh, 
they recognized that the mom and the, the kids didn't really have appropriate clothing. Mm. And uh, at that point, they, they thought about, you know, the situation, how the kids uh, needed help. And they started a fundraiser right there to, uh, to help that family. And uh, later on that year, actually gave that family a nice Christmas as well after they got them the, the immediate need taken care of. Wow, that's fantastic. And from what I understand, you do a combination of both currently. You help out families for Christmas, and you also make sure, even throughout the year, that there is appropriate clothing for the weather available. Tell me a little bit about how that initial experience has morphed into something so much bigger. Sure. Actually, now we have at uh, Roosevelt Elementary, uh, we have clothing available, jackets, boots, uh, gloves, hats, that uh, sometimes are you know, people have, have needs for, mm -hmm. and uh, the school system handles the distribution. They, they understand who the, the people are that uh, have the needs, mm -hmm. and uh, we work very closely with the schools on that. Wow, that's really exciting, and then when Christmas rolls around, I think you've expanded into providing even food for individuals? In, at Christmas, yes. Last year, I think we provided uh, uh, both Christmas gifts and a, a large food basket. Uh, for 22 families, and I believe it was 50 children. So wow. we spend about $4,000 a year on that. Yeah, absolutely. And so to help raise the money needed to provide these new items for people, tell me a little bit about how that goes about. Well, we have our, uh, our main fundraiser every March, usually the second Tuesday of every March, and it's called the Wild Game Dinner. Okay. Um, Gino Santia at uh, Santia Hall uh, assembles a, a great group of uh, uh, wild game. We have elk stew, uh, rabbit, uh, sometimes boar, bison, uh, maybe quail, uh, okay. different things every year. And uh, we have a, just a great time to get together, uh, do some raffles, uh, have some fun. Mm -hmm. The community gets together, sits down, has a meal, and raises enough money to, uh, to support our cause. Wonderful. Now, do you accept donations in addition to financial donations of the actual items themselves, or is that something you prefer, well, the organization prefers to handle? What we do is we do have a, a, a glove and hat drive usually oh, okay. every, uh, about Thanksgiving every year, and that's handled over at uh, Gino's Restaurant. And uh, we have a lot of people that donate a lot of jackets, hats, gloves, things like that for us at that time. We always want new items rather than used. Right, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, but, but, Primarily, we go out and buy what, what's needed otherwise. Okay, great. And have you seen a need for this grow or, or become more and more aware? How, how do the numbers look? I think our, our, uh, we've gotten better at finding people. So okay, I think that's, that's made yeah. our numbers grow a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, the need maybe has gone up a little bit. So we're always trying to uh, improve what we can do and improve our, uh, improve our goals and improve our fundraising ra uh, raising capabilities. Wonderful. So if people are watching and they're like, oh, I either maybe want to consider joining the Jacket Club. I don't know how that could happen. You could tell us about that. Or I want to contribute. Where can they find out more information? You can find out most information about the Jacket Club on our Facebook page. Okay. It's the Jacket Club of Kego Harbor. And then uh, normally Geno's as well has tickets available and things like that. And we have oh, our meetings cool. there. Uh, on a regular basis. So if you check out that Facebook page, it'll give, us the mo give the most information about who we are and how to get involved. And we're always happy to have more members. Wonderful. I love to see the historical aspect of this group and how it's grown and evolved over the decades. It's really exciting. Thank you so much for helping out our community and especially the little ones in our community. Well, we're happy to do that. It's, uh, it feels good when we, when we do it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much. Once again, we've been talking with Dennis Kearns of the Jacket Club of Kego Harbor. Now it's time for one of our favorite episodes of Minute with Nature, where we learn new and interesting tidbits from park naturalist Lauren Azuri. Hello and welcome to Minute with Nature. I'm your host, Lauren Azuri, the park naturalist for West Bloomfield Parks. And we're inside our nature room today talking about albino animals. Something kind of rare, but exciting nonetheless. Albinoism is the absence of pigment, the melanin pigment, in our skin, our hair, and our eyes. And it's controlled by genes, usually a recessive gene. And it's not just their skin tone that you're looking for to identify a, an albino. It would be their eyes as well. Because there are lots of other animals that have white fur to survive in the Arctic, like polar bears and Arctic fox. 
but they have color in their eyes. If you have a red or pink eyed animal, sometimes even a light blue, that means that they're an albino and they lack that pigment in their eyes as well. Albino animals are at a disadvantage. They do have lower survival in the wild. They don't have as much protection from the sun. They have impaired vision, so if they're hunters, generally it might be harder for them to find food. They are not as good at camouflaging anymore because they do stick out in their natural environment. And they're not as easy to find mates for them. So it is harder to survive as a, uh, an albino in the wild. We actually have an albino animal ambassador here, our garter snake. And a garter snake is generally um, a black with a yellow line through it and is meant to camouflage in the tall grasses that it lives in. That's why we have our albino garter snake here in our nature room. It acts as an animal ambassador. Um, we brought it inside as a captive animal because it wouldn't have a very high survival rate out in the wild. And it's also great for education for people to see why different animals have different colorings. And that's your Minute with Nature. You can watch other episodes of Minute with Nature anytime at civiccentertv.com slash MWN. We now move on to our final segment on the splash called Person of the Week, where we recognize those within the community who are either inspiring or providing towards others. This week's recipient is Michelle Torian, West Bloomfield resident and founder of the Meow Town Lounge. <music> Michelle Torian highly values the virtues of care and compassion. In fact, she has dedicated a significant portion of her life to providing that to local animals. As the president of Pet Adoption Alternative of Warren, Michelle spends her days working tirelessly to find strong, caring homes for our furry friends, ensuring that the love they give to us is given right back to them. And now Michelle has taken the efforts of her professional life right here to Greater West Bloomfield. Michelle has worked tirelessly in partnership with Pet Value of West Bloomfield to help find homes for shelter cats right in our backyard. Her founding of the Meow Town Lounge allows people from the community to come together in a relaxing environment, spend time with cats, and show them the love that they deserve, all the while feeling some of that love themselves. Michelle Torian is helping our community connect with animals and find them the loving homes that they need to live a long, happy life, which is why she is our person of the week. If you know someone who is providing a service to their community, then let us know by sending an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate those who are making a difference in our area, and we appreciate all of your suggestions. That's going to do it for us this week, but remember, you can watch new episodes of The Splash every Monday at 5.30 p.m. or throughout the week for replays. You can also watch every episode online at civiccentertv.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook under Civic Center TV 15, YouTube at Civic Center TV 15, and on Twitter at Civic Center TV for more information. For all of our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Sheena Monin. Thank you for watching The Splash.